To me, life is this incredible kind of unknown mystery thing that I, I can't quite unpack. I did a, a presentation at the Society for Photographic Education titled, you know, can I still call myself a photographer? Because basically I do things to photographs or I use photographs. I still think I'm a photographer, but <laughs> who knows? I don't, I don't know that it matters. Photography is where I found my voice. My husband and I were in Mexico as missionaries. Then the divorce happened, so I went back to graduate school at age 50. This was kind of a departure. My undergraduate degree was in Bible, but um, I had been doing art all those years in between, so it kind of made sense. I was going to do drawing and painting and discovered photography. I couldn't orchestrate the paint. It was too much having to control, and that's not my nature. John McWilliams was my major professor, and I was using a 35 millimeter camera, and, and it was just, to me, it felt kind of dead. I mean, I got bored, I guess, was the point. And he said, you want to try pinhole? And I had never heard of pinhole. Every time I would get an image, it's like, oh, look at that. And it would like be a whole new kind of idea. I didn't have control. I had to discover what the camera found, and then you'd make a choice. Being 50 and up, I think I was ready for a lot of things that I wouldn't have been ready for right out of college. You know, I think I, I brought life experience and a perspective. I, I kind of more or less knew who I was at that point. I don't think we ever totally knew who we are, but anyway. The thesis title was um, Steal the Elixir and Run, which is part of Joseph Campbell's um, cycle. The reason I chose that particular step was like, I'm not going to throw the baby out with the wash. What I got, and what I was a Bible major, what I got out of all that was really amazing. Somebody once said, don't you wish you'd gotten divorced sooner? It's like, no way. <laughs> you know, I, all, of, all of those years and all that, that we went through working with that were very valuable to me in terms of who I am at this point. After I finished graduate school at Georgia State, that was when I got in touch with the Alabama Arts Council and began doing the Artist in Education program. It was Pinky's Portable Pop-Up Pinhole Camera and Dark Room. And I had to wait two weeks to learn how to say that without stumbling. This was a pop-up camper. The kids could go in, they would see the image upside down and backwards, but I could actually make a photographic negative and bring it back into the dark room, develop it, and then make a positive from that. That was a really valuable time, and I loved working with the kids and going around the state of Alabama to locations that were important to me and making a photograph there. All of that was adding into my artistic kind of work. I really did not know about my grandmother and photography, and I had been at Georgia State for a year and came home, and Aunt Ruth said, do you want your grandmother's uh, glass negatives and her camera? And I was like blown away. She was very influential in my early years in that daddy was at, at World War II, and mother was working in Mobile as a draftsman. So we lived with my grandmother, who basically was my mother during those years. Plus her sister, Aunt Nell, my Aunt Nell, who was blind from age 11, lived in the house next door. So that had a really strong influence on me. I mean, she didn't have control over a lot of things, but her way of taking control of things, I think, influenced me a lot. One of the first things I remember my mother talking about was how important was the negative space. And I thought, I don't know what she's talking about until I started doing photography. And it's like, oh my gosh, the negative space. I, I just learned to see things with her kind of eyes. That's part of what made photography work for me. It was a way of seeing the world, a way of looking. To solarize the Polaroid negatives would throw the positive and the negative into funny juxtapositions. To me, those were magic images because part of it looked like it was the real face and part of it looked like it was a, the negative. 
this has been said a lot, but I mean, you need the negative to define the positive. And I just, I think in life, things that have been difficult have helped to define who I am. My sister's cancer kicked in. I couldn't be in the dark room doing those gigantic prints. That was just, it, it wasn't working at all for me. I was intrigued with anatomy books that showed what was going on inside of her body. I would look at these things. I've done handwork all my life. I've knitted, I've crocheted. My blind aunt Nell was incredibly influential in this. We have books where she has the patterns that she could feel the pattern and know how to do her crochet or her knitting from that. So I started stitching anatomical things on an image of the body. It was one of those things where it was small, so it was right here in front of me and I could do that. And it really was moving me away from the straight photographic image. That's what was making me kind of uncomfortable. But I realized, yeah, this is, this is okay. Part of what I like about the stitching process or the cell weaving process I do, it's like, oh, wow. So if it went this way, you know, one thing leads to another, one thread leads to another. Sewing on those things made me think about, okay, what else can a, you know, what would a photograph sound like, which is when I did a bunch of the music boxes. I do like not sitting still. I do like discovering new things. I don't know, it's kind of like, oh, I wonder what the next thing's gonna be. What I'm doing is trying to make sense out of what's going on and how life is moving. I realize that it's, it is kind of, I, I don't like the word spiritual. I think it gets overused. I'm, I haven't found another word for it yet, but it's something about trying to figure out why in the world we're here. <laughs> Partly it's about my sister's death. My son was also about, about the time, well, right before she, died, my son was killed. The whole issue of our life process or where we end and, and, and how we live our lives and our transitions, I mean, aging at this point is very focal. When you get to be 83, you know, you see things that, that weren't there before. If you don't follow your vision or follow your voice, it becomes false. I would have liked at one point to think that I could actually make work and sell it and that would be my living. I don't think that would have ever worked for me. It would cause too much control. It would lose the, the energy, whatever that is, that, that vibration that happens. My idea about art is that the more you can be totally true to yourself, the more genuine what you're putting out there is. I mean, I like showing work and I like for it to be out, but in reality, I'm doing it because it's my journey. I'm still looking, I'm still searching.